They played us like an organ. They raised the, li the orange, and then up to red, and then they dropped it back to orange. I mean, they, they gave these mixed messages which were crazy making. The world has changed after September the 11th. It's changed because we're no longer safe. Fly and enjoy America's great uh, destination spots. We've entered what may very well prove to be the most dangerous security environment the world's known. Take your families and enjoy life. Terrorists are doing everything they can to gain even deadlier means of striking us. Get down to Disney World in Florida. It's like a training a dog. You tell them sit down and you tell them to roll over at the same time. Dog doesn't know what to do. Well, the American people are being treated like that. It was really very, very skillfully and, and, and ugly in, in what they did. We must stop the terror. I call upon all nations to do everything they can to stop these terrorist killers. Thank, Thank you. you. Now watch this drive. All right. They will continue, in my view, uh, as long as this administration is in charge, of every once in a while stimulating everybody to be afraid, just in case you forgot. It's not going to go down to green or blue. It's never going to get there. There clearly is no way that anyone can live constantly on edge like that. The harsh reality facing American families today is that they're not as safe as they used to be. Drug dealers and users looking for their next fix, gangs who roam the streets in search of their next victim, and the growing threat of terrorists means the need for protection is ever greater. And now that protection is here. Zytec Engineering LLC has developed and tested a safe room, finally affordable to the average American citizen, the kind of protection formerly obtainable only by the wealthy or powerful. Heck, you can be sitting in here drinking your finest Bordeaux and enjoying life while chaos is erupting outside. Every family in America should prepare uh, itself for a terrorist attack. Now to escaping from a skyscraper. John Rivers is the CEO of the Executive Shoot Corporation. Good morning to you, John. Good morning, Matt. Tell me about the product you're bringing to the market. It's an uh, emergency escape shoot. It's an option of last resort. How high do you have to be in the building for that shoot to actually take effect? You only have to be on the 10th floor or above. They can put this on themselves? Right. They can put this on themselves in as easy as about 30 seconds. It's real easy to put on. Here. Sorry. It's okay. Real easy to put on. But uh, when you first get this shoot, you're going to want to put it on and try it on a few times yourself. Jamie's having around. a little trouble then, putting that thing on, I want to mention. I mean, is this something that, that you honestly think in a moment of, of panic that someone can, can operate properly? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, this is actually, uh, Jamie's probably never put this thing on before in her life, so it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's, it's something that when you get it, you're going to want to put it on several times. Well, despite the raising of the terror alert level, residents here in Saginaw are continuing with their Christmas errands. Frances Troik and her family do some last-minute holiday shopping, knowing that Al-Qaeda is planning to attack America. She says being in Saginaw doesn't make her feel any safer than if she was in New York City. Midland is close by, and I said, Detroit's not far, that far away. I said, they could be something, of, and Flint, this could be some be concerns for people around here. Well, you, you never know where they're going to hit. You never know where they're going to hit. But one potential target specifically mentioned by the terrorist has security officials baffled. It's tiny Tappahannock, Virginia, population 2016. Such an attack could generate widespread fear that even here in rural small-town America, no one is entirely safe. On the 6 o'clock news, there was something but a, a, a terrorist alert in Tappahannock. What did the FBI tell you? Well, they contacted me by phone, uh, basically let me know about this word, Tappahannock, and that's how it started. And their so-called chatter that they pick up, they wasn't sure Tappahannock, it is a Rappahannock County, this is the Rappahannock River. There is a ra Rappahannock, a place called Rappahannock, and they got it mixed up. This Tappahannock, not Rappahannock. Is there any terrorist target around here? Not that we can really think of. It can happen anywhere. We have a Walmart here. We have a big oh, yeah. spaghetti supper in here. Walmart, probably. Do you feel extra suspicious of outsiders? Oh, everybody does it. It's just something that happens. 
when I look at certain people, I wonder, oh my goodness, do you think they could be a terrorist? You never know what's going to happen. That's right, you never know, I mean, what's, gonna you never know what's going to happen. It's going to happen right now, you know. Never trust nobody you don't know. And even if you do know them, you really can't trust them then. From Tappahannock to Rappahannock to every town and village in America, the people were afraid. And they turned to their leader to protect them. But protect them from what? Let the eagle soar like she's never soared before from rocky coast to golden shore let the mighty eagle soar meet John Ashcroft in 2000, he was running for re-election as senator from Missouri against a man who died the month before the election. The voters preferred the dead guy, so George W. Bush made him his attorney general. He was sworn in on a stack of Bibles, because when you can't beat a dead guy, you need all the help you can get. During the summer before 9-11, Ashcroft told acting FBI director Thomas Picard that he didn't want to hear anything more about terrorist threats. Mr. Watson had come to you and said that the CIA was very concerned that there would be an attack. You said that you told the Attorney General this <laughs> fact repeatedly in these meetings. Is that correct? I told him at least on two occasions. And you told the staff, according to this statement, that Mr. Ashcroft told you that he did not want to hear about this anymore. Is that correct? That is correct. His own FBI knew that summer that there were Al-Qaeda members in the U.S. and that bin Laden was sending his agents to flight schools around the country. But Ashcroft's Justice Department turned a blind eye and a deaf ear. But after 9-11, John Ashcroft had some brilliant ideas for how to protect America. The USA Patriot Act, adopted by Congress and signed by Bush six weeks after the attacks, has changed the way the government does business. The USA Patriot Act allows for searches of medical and financial records, computer and telephone conversations, and even for the books you take out of the library. But most of the people we spoke to say they're willing to give up some liberties to fight terrorism. Maybe that's a good thing. It's de definitely sad, but it's, it has to be done. Yes, something needed to be done. These are the good people who make up Peace Fresno, a community group in Fresno, California. Unlike the rest of us, they've received an early lesson in what the Patriot Act is all about. Each week they meet to discuss matters of peace. They sit around, they share stories, they eat cookies. Some have more than one. This is Aaron Stokes, a member of Peace Fresno. The other members liked him. He had come to the meetings, he went with us. We go out on Friday nights and stand on a very busy corner in Fresno. And he had gone with us, he had handed out flyers. He went with us in June to a WTO protest. Then one day, Aaron didn't show up to the meeting. My friend Dan and I were reading the Sunday newspaper. And when I picked up the paper, in the local section, Aaron's picture caught my eye. The article said that a sheriff's deputy had been killed, and I saw it had a name that wasn't the right name, and it said that he was a member of the sheriff's anti-terrorism unit. That's right. The photo of the man in the newspaper was not the Aaron Stokes they had come to know. He was actually Deputy Aaron Kilner, and he had infiltrated their group. Sheriff Pierce made it very clear that, yes, in fact, Aaron Kilner was assigned to infiltrate Peace Fresno, that he was able to infiltrate organizations that are open to the public. You could understand why the police needed to spy on a group like Peace Fresno. Just look at them. A gathering of terrorists, if I ever saw one. This is Barry Reingold, a retired phone worker from Oakland, California. Barry likes to work out in the gym. Somewhere between his cardio and his strength training, Barry got political. We're up in the gym and it was 